Praise the Lord. And welcome to this edition of our series of daily broadcasts in which we have tagged the state of the union. The union between Jesus and his bride, the church. And we are still about the business of the word of the Lord saying to tell my people to return to me. And as we have said repeatedly over the course of this series of broadcasts, that he says, tell my people to return to me. Let us keep in mind that he says, my people. That would mean this is not some kind of judgment or rejection. If anything, it's an invitation. It's a call. Tell my people to return to me. Yes, of course, we understand from the very the nature of the words chosen that it also implies that his people are, as it were, separate from him in some way. And so he says, return. Return. Now we can understand this in so many possible dimensions. It could be that we have turned from him and we are now engaged in something other than his pleasure. It can also be that we have become distracted. Distracted, and you see, when you are distracted, you tend to slow down concerning what you should be doing because the distracting element now occupies your attention and so your attention tends to go in the direction of the distracting element. And so you seem to gain speed in that direction and lose speed in that from which you are being distracted. So in returning, we will be returning to the place where we ought to have speed in the place where we ought to be paying attention. Then again, to return would be just like being distracted. We've lost our focus. We're beginning to focus on the not so important, like Jesus said in Matthew chapter 23. He said, you pay tithes of this and that, but you neglect the weightier aspects of the law. In other words, and, and then he said, this you ought to do, but you ought to pay more attention to the other also. So he's saying, return to the whole body of the law, rather than being skewed in your compliance, as it were. But for some others, like he says in Psalm 101 verse 3, or thereabouts, he says that God hates the work of them that turn aside. He hates the work of them that turn aside. And turning aside in this case will be turning from him to whatever else. So return will be cast your gaze back on that which is critical in your relationship with God, which will be God himself, or God in Christ, if you like. So he says, tell my people to return to me. Now, in the past uh, few days, I think this is the sixth day, we have been looking at scriptural accounts of God asking his people to return or in fact inviting them into his presence so that we understand and therefore establish 
that a message of tell my people to return is not only scriptural, but relevant. Because as we begin to look at the historical examples from the scriptures, we get to see the possibilities why would God be asking his people to come for a meeting or to return, if you like? Now, we saw in the last broadcast, in Genesis chapter 49, for example, the father figure in that case, Jacob, he says, gather yourselves together and come unto me that I may tell thee what will befall thee in the last days. Now, I hope we understand that There are certain pertinent um, positions we must be clear about when we read the Bible. So yes, holy men spake or wrote as they were moved on by the Holy Spirit. In some cases, especially the epistles in the New Testament, the scriptures were written as letters to certain churches in certain geographical locations. The prophetic books were written, penned by the prophets themselves. And then other accounts were written mostly by the men or women by whose names they are named. But well, the point is in each of those accounts every time God asked for his people to return or to gather before him there was a purpose it was God speaking in the written document so that when we read the Bible it will be advantageous for us to come with a mindset prepared to be spoken to by the written word. It may not be entire, the entire body of scripture that you read at any given moment. But as you read, the written word, some portion of the written word can become a spoken word to you. Or it can be understood in the light of this is for me, this relates to me. So, for example, in Genesis chapter 49, where it says, and we know that a man was referring to his children. Jacob was referring to his children, which we now know to be the children of Israel. And he says, gather yourselves together, that I may tell you what will befall you in the last days. Now, when I read that, what it says, what, what, what the word of God says, says to me is come up hither so that I can tell you what is soon to come to pass. Now we can understand that reasoning from Matthew 24 because that's exactly what happened in Matthew 24. They gathered unto Jesus and he began to tell them about the last days. So when you read the Bible come with a preparation of mind such that you can put yourself in a position where the scriptures can speak to you as if God were literally in the book and talking to you from it. Otherwise, you are likely to miss certain implications in the written document. When you read the Bible, put yourself, especially as a person of God, as, a, as part of the church, the people of God today, the Bible was, much of the Bible was written to the people of God anyway. So at one time or the other, something from the scriptures will be relevant to you. So when you come to read the Bible, put yourself in the position of those to whom it is written. Because first of all, it was written to God's people. So put yourself in the position of God's people then and now and let the scriptures examine you 
whether or not you are aligned with the righteousness of God. Mm. So when it says, gather yourself together unto me, that I may tell you what may befall you in the last days. Now, if you were to read that on your own, and that struck you, perhaps God might be asking for a gathering, a meeting, if you like, a prophetic meeting, where he can release certain pieces of information. The body of scripture can be very dynamic. All right. Now, having put that in place, having put that in place, we said we have been looking at scriptural accounts of God asking his people to return one way or another, return from idolatry, especially to the Jews, to Israel, through the prophets, return from idolatry. Return from their whoredoms, prostituting themselves at every altar, which was not of God. But there are other times when God asked the people to gather, and it was not because of idolatry. If, if anything, it was to set them aright by his righteousness so that they could walk with him. Now, we will find several of these examples, especially concerning Israel. I will be reading from just one portion of the Bible today, referring or, or, or regarding one such request for a gathering. Because from that gathering came what we now know to be the Ten Commandments. We are not talking about the Ten Commandments themselves. But the gathering. What God will do as a result of the gathering is entirely up to God. But us is to respond to the invitation. Us is to respond to the invitation. So he says, tell my people to return to me. Yes, by the very implication of the word, something is already wrong. They are doing something that is outside of his pleasure. So in asking them to return, he wants to set them right. But in the case of Israel, in Exodus chapter 19, they had no clue about what the righteousness of God meant or what stood for the righteousness of God. So let's go into the scriptures and let's avail ourselves of what's there. Now in Exodus chapter 19, first God had asked Moses to come up. Now in verse 10, as we read, we see, it says in verse 10, and the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them <clears throat> today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that ye go not up into the mouth or touch the border of it whosoever touches the mouth shall surely be put to death <clears throat> they shall not an hand touch it but he shall surely be stoned or shot through whether it be beast or man he shall not live when the trumpet sounded long they shall come up to the mouth and Moses went down from the mouth unto the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day, come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mouth, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. 
And verse 17, this is what it says. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. Now, let us be clear. I think that the wording of verse 17 not only speaks for itself, but is particularly relevant to our cause here. And Moses brought forth the people out of the mount to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. And the Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in a fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace. And the whole mount quaked greatly. And the whole mount quaked greatly. Now this is the prelude to Exodus chapter 20 such that in Exodus chapter 20, God began to speak to the people what we now understand as the Ten Commandments. But first, and this is what is relevant to us, God asked Moses, the prophet of his time, God asked Moses to get the people to him. Go and sanctify the people and bring them to me. Now with the benefit of hindsight, we can finish, we can, we can put words in God's mouth, so to say, and complete the sentence. Go and sanctify the people and bring them to me, so that I may give them commandments for life, commandments for their living, that I may give them instruction on righteousness. which we now know to be the Ten Commandments. Now here is our presentation for today. God says in Exodus 19 verse 17, Moses brought forth the people and they met with God. And straight from that meeting, God began to speak. Never mind that the Bible actually tells us that the people could not handle the presence of God and ran away and asked Moses to go and represent them, blah, blah, blah. But the point is, God had instructed that the people be brought to him. Now, in that day, going to God was structured. It had to follow a certain manner. And so he had said to Moses, go and sanctify the people, and go and warn them, set bounds to them, so they don't touch the mountain, or die. So it wasn't easy back in the day, for example, to say, tell my people to return to me as if each man will go look for God, however, as we can do today now. So he came and he met with the entire congregation at once. Now, all over this part of the scriptures, from Exodus all the way to Deuteronomy, there were several such gatherings. So uh, there's no point repeating or, or reading each of those gatherings to our hearing because it comes to the same thing. God demanded that the people gather and then he spoke through his servants to them. But the point is, one of the reasons God says, tell my people to return to me, will always be that he wants to speak his mind to them. He wants to talk with his people. He wants to talk with his people. Whether talking with or talking to or rebuking or judge, he wants to talk to his people. He wants the pleasure of the gathering of his people. So at one time, the gathering was to choose a king, for example. In First Samuel chapter 8 or so. And they took lots and they began to, to cast lots and finally it fell on a certain gentleman from Kish. 
who we now call King Saul. Every time something was to happen in the congregation of Israel, there would usually be a gathering of the people unto the Lord. Never mind that the gathering often meant unto Moses or unto Samuel or unto King David. But it was understood that those people represented God. But our index case of today, the gathering was unto God himself directly. But what was the gathering for? He wanted to tell them certain things. Just as with Jacob in Genesis 49, he wanted to tell his children about what would befall before them in the last days. So that he says, tell my people to return to me. That invitation may not be about correction or, or judgment or, or rebuke or something we consider to be negative. It may just be an invitation to communion. It may just be an invitation to fellowship. Tell my people to return to me. What may not be added will be, it's been a while that there was some fellowship. Tell my people to return to my presence. Tell my people to return to my chambers. Whatever. But he says, go tell my people to return to me. Now, until we do return, we will not know the why. Or perhaps the what. Now, in, in, in in episodes past of this series of broadcasts, yes, we have outlined some of the possibilities. Sometimes it is because he just wants to fine tune whatever we will be doing. Sometimes we have been too far out into the business of ministry and we are at the risk of either spreading ourselves too thin or being disconnected from the head. And he knows that, he can sense that. So he sends out that invitation. Now this invitation can come to the individual in so many different ways. So many different ways. Now, okay, this, this morning, for example. I'm going about my going about my business. At home, I'm going about my business. Now, but as I did that, three different times, I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, pray a little prayer, pray a little prayer, pray a little prayer. I did not know the why. Knowing the why is not important. Pray a little prayer. I don't know what about. I think I do now. Pray a little prayer. I'm moving about. I'm doing this or that around the house. And he kept saying, pray a little prayer. By the third time, I realized that's not me thinking. I'm, I'm being spoken to. So finally, I had to sit down to pray the little prayer. It was little because it was just about five, ten minutes. It was not pray an hour-long prayer, or hey, go and pray. In which case, uh, you can't determine how long it will be. He said, pray a little prayer. So I knew it was not going to be a long, drawn-out time of praying. Like I said, as it turned out, it didn't last more than five, ten minutes. Just a couple of minutes. Now, but as I did. In the cause of the ending of that praying, he spoke quietly in my heart. Perhaps he said, pray a little prayer. That was an invitation to come into his presence so that I could hear that thing he wanted to say. Perhaps at that point in time, I was too busy to be spoken to or to receive that which he wanted to say to me. So he said, pray a little prayer. As I responded to that, my entire being became focused on him. And then very quietly, very quietly, he spoke the words he needed to speak to me. 
They were not words of direction or illumination or, or whatever. They were simply words of caution. Sometimes that may be the reason he's asking, tell my people to return because he wants to deliver a word of caution. A word of caution. Now, but whatever it is, the invitation still stands. Tell my people to return to me. That's the word for today. God wants to have a meeting with you. And that meeting cannot hold until you return to his presence. Whether it is to pray a little prayer, whether it is to separate yourself for whole swaths of time, but the point is, he says, tell my people to return to me. In the case of Exodus 19 and Exodus chapter 20, it was because he wanted to give them the statutes, the commandments, the instructions, which we now understand as the book of the law. But whatever it may be, the invitation still stands. Tell my people to return to me. Why don't you go and hear your own? I heard my own this morning. It was a word of caution. Be careful about this and that. It was just a be careful word. Be careful about this and that. Your own word is waiting for you when you do return. God bless you, and I'll see you again same time tomorrow in the precious name of Jesus.